Hello everyone, welcome to this short tutorial in which we're gonna see how to run a Jupyter Notebook from your browser uh, that's running inside a Docker container and that Docker container is sitting inside an EC2 instance. So let's begin with creating our EC2 instance first. So as you can see, this is our EC2 homepage. Let's launch an instance. So I'm gonna select the Ubuntu, any Ubuntu. So I'm gonna go with the latest one. I'm gonna go with the free tier eligible T2 micro, review and launch. And the only change we're gonna make here is with the security groups. This is just for the tutorial. So we're gonna do all traffic and then from anywhere. So you wanna make this more specific when you're launching it for your own stuff, but for a tutorial or for your own personal work, I think this should be okay. Then we're gonna hit review and launch. Now everything is fine. We're gonna say launch. And a good thing is always create a new pair or a pair that you have on your computer and then save that pair. So I have this saved, right? So if you hit on a new pair, so, okay, so let's create a new pair. So hit new pair, then create sample video one. And then let's download this pair and let's save this pair if you wanna SSH from using a terminal, but we are not gonna do that in this video. But make sure you save this file. So let's launch our instance. This is gonna take a few seconds to launch. So we're gonna wait here until this launches. So I'm gonna click on this. Okay, the instance is launched. Now let's, so you have the spam file, right? So normally you would launch from your terminal, but now the EC2 or Amazon AWS general gives you this browser SSH. So let's connect to this. So let's connect. And we have a terminal instance of the browser, right? Of our instance. So now the first thing I'm, so there are many ways to run a Jupyter Notebook. So the easiest way is running inside a Docker container. So let's install Docker, right? And there are many ways to install Docker. The easiest way I find is to run the shell script. So first I'm gonna get that shell script. So I'm gonna do curl F S capital S capital L and then that URL. Okay, and then I want to, as a target, I want to name that as get docker.sh. So as you can see, I have that file right here. And now I'm going to execute that file. So get docker. Yeah, this is going to take a while. So we're just going to wait until it installs docker. Great, so now we have our Docker installed on our EC2 instance. So let's see if this works. Let's do, let's do Docker image ls. And I'm just gonna say this is not going to work, but let's just see why. So it says got permission denied, right? So let's do a sudo Docker image ls. Now this works, so Docker is installed, but we have to keep using the keyword sudo, right? This is because we haven't added Docker to a sudoers for that user. So we're just gonna do that now. So you can say sudo group add and oops, this Docker, it says Docker already exists. Great, now I'm just gonna do another command, sudo user mod a capital G and then Docker to the current users. Great. And now let's see if our commands work. So, and I'm gonna say again, this is not going to work now. We have to exit and then log back in. So we're just gonna see, type exit, and then we're gonna reconnect. Just gonna wait for it to reconnect. Now let's see, docker image ls, great. So now it's working. Now let's create a directory called sample. Now let's cd into sample, and we're gonna, make a docker file so just gonna say vim docker file and i'm going to build this file from the jupyter notebook docker image the reason for this is because this image has almost all of the data science packages already installed so i just went to docker page and i just typed jupyter notebook docker so this is where we come and i'm just going to grab the image name so it's jupyter 
slash data science notebook. So I'm just going to come here and say from, sorry, uh, from that. And then I'm going to say expose port 8888 because Jupyter Notebook usually runs on port 8888. And then once you launch that instance, run this command, Jupyter hyphen notebook. It's also Jupyter space notebook, but I like to use hyphen. And now we're going to save this file. Great. And now we're going to build an image. So let's say Docker build from this current directory. And let's name our image as sample image. This is again going to take a while, so we're just going to wait here. OK, so now we have our image build. So we're going to run a container from it. So we're going to say docker container run in detached mode, so D. Then we're going to specify the name of our container. So let's call it sample underscore container. And we're going to publish some ports, so dash P. And we're going to say map the 5000 port on our EC2 instance to 888 port on our Docker container. Remember, we exposed port 888 on the Docker container. And then build from the image that's called sample image. Great. So now the image is made. We are almost there. So let's just see if this runs or not. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to go here. Leave. Yep. And we're going to paste it right here. Oh, sorry. Port 5000, right? OK, so do you remember we always have a token, right, for Jupyter Notebooks? So now we don't see any token here. So token is running inside the Docker container, right? So how do we get that? So we say Docker logs dash dash follow. And then the name of our container. So it's sample container. So we get all the logs from our container. So this is the token. So we just copy from right here. Either you can enter the token or you can just modify the URL. So I'm just going to modify the URL. And right here. And there you go. Let's just try out a few things in a Jupyter Notebook. So we're just going to say import pandas as pd, import numpy as numpy np. And let's just run something. So numpy.a gives us what? OK, so let's use numpy.absolute of this. Perfect. So as you can see, we, we have this running, right? So you saw how easy it is. Like just using one Docker file, you can get all the data science packages, and you can access them from the browser. I hope this was easy to follow enough, and any feedback would be appreciated. Thank you.